thank you also for um, joining us today for creating and interpreting graphs for behavior analysts. This presentation was designed because I've noticed that many um, behavior analysts or people preparing to become behavior analysts and other professionals working with um, children using doing behavior change procedures, they aren't very comfortable necessarily with, with graphing their, their data. They design great data collection procedures, they collect data, they train well on, on collecting the data, but then actually incorporating that into a visual analysis um, to be displayed sometimes can be very challenging, especially for designs that sometimes are a little more complicated, such as multiple baselines um, or alternating treatment designs. Sometimes those, those other elements being incorporated into your graphs can make using the computer <laughs> to create the graphs a bit overwhelming. While it's always fine to use paper and pencil, um, creating graphs using technology really can make your presentation much more robust. So the first question is, why visual analysis? Why can't the data we collect and just the numbers that we have be enough? Um, well, graphs provide the opportunity for the visual, the visual analysis of the data. And this is definitely the preferred method of data analysis by a behavior analyst. Um, I learned firsthand the importance of visual analysis while I was pregnant. I had gestational diabetes and I, I was expected to record um, my, my blood sugar levels on a daily basis and different time intervals during the day. And I would have this long chart of all this data, but it was hard for me to really see that anything was really, if it was going well or going terrible. It seemed like there was a few spiked areas, but I couldn't really see it and I decided, you know, I should really graph this. And when I graphed it, I was able to see, wow, my, my levels of when my blood sugar is high is actually more frequent than I had thought. Um, and so when talking to the doctor, I was able to um, proceed to get other interventions that would really help lower my blood sugar. But for me, the visual analysis was very important. Um, so I understood firsthand the importance of using visual analysis for data. According to Cooper, Heron, and Heward, graphs provide an analyzable format for identifying behavior trends, the level and variability of the data, and it doesn't rely on necessarily on statistical assumptions. Now, although we will be discussing um, how to create graphs using Excel, as I mentioned, uh, creating graphs, period, you know, are very important um, for the visual analysis of your data. So if you still feel uncomfortable or people um, you're supervising feel uncomfortable, they can always use paper and pencil. In the meantime, you know, um, there's nothing wrong with that, but I hope that at the end of this presentation, you will feel much more comfortable using technology to create your graphs. Um, another great thing about paper and pencil is they're great for self-management plans, or if you have um, consumers or young consumers uh, tracking their own data, uh, paper and pencil works very well. So as most of you know that are a certified behavior analyst, um, the visual analysis, visual displays of data is part of content area seven in the third edition task list. Um, the board, the behavior analyst certification board expects us to be able to visually represent our data. Um, they expect us to understand how and when to use different types of graphs um, to accurately display the visual analysis of our data. 7-1 um, from Content Area 7 um, expects behavior analysts to select a data display that effectively communicates that quantitative relationship. The data that you take on paper, you need to be able to show that graphically and visually uh, to be able to make decisions.